Next up, we need to choose an appropriate variable to represent the size of an instance. Remember, before we just used n. Uh, now we have n, m, and n, w. Uh, so we can use both. Uh, use n, m, and n, w. Uh, or we could say, you know, n is equal to n, m plus n, w. Or maybe even just n is equal to n, m, because we know n, m is at least as large as n, w, so that would make n the larger number. Uh, or n equals n, m, which is greater than or equal to n, w. They're kind of all reasonable choices. We'll use whichever one feels good. So given that it says exactly or asymptotically how many solution forms are there, and it'll help to give a name to the number of solutions as a function of instance size. Um, so you know what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to do an analysis of our ASU algorithm up above. ASU generates all the possible solutions, and we said earlier that it's this partition thing. What that basically means is it never regenerates a solution. Every solution it generates as it goes along is a unique solution, so it's not doing extra work effectively. Um, that means that if we analyze how long it takes for ASU to run in some reasonable terms, that's effectively going to tell us how many solutions there are. Uh, so let's give that a shot. Uh, ASU, mm, it's not really ASU we're doing, we're, we're, we're calculating the number. So let's say the number of solutions that ASU produces. Uh, for a given number of men and number of women. And here all I'm doing is I, I'm giving a name that corresponds to ASU. N sub ASU would be nice, but we've already got enough subscripts, so I'm just going to say N. Uh, and we don't need the set of men. We just need the size of that set right now because we're just concerned with the number of solutions. And I'm guessing it's usually the case that whatever the size of the set is, all that really is, sorry, whatever the set is, all that really matters is its size. If that's a bad guess, I'll come back and revisit it later. But this is a nice abstraction. Uh, so we're going to abstract W to just its size. Okay. So that is equal to, uh, well, let's start with our base case. So if the size of W is zero, then the number of solutions is, well, we just returned uh, the empty set. Oh, you know what? We returned the empty set uh, up here, and that was meant to be a solution, but we're supposed to return a set of solutions from ASU, so this is actually wrong. I know this is going to look ugly. Maybe you ran into this in 121. This is the set containing the empty set. It's a set of solutions, and there is one solution inside of it. That one solution is the empty set, an empty solution. OK, so how many solutions do we produce when nw is equal to 0? We produce one solution if nw is equal to 0. Otherwise, we go through all of the men Okay, so for every element of m, that is to say nm times, because there are nm men, we're going to generate all these subsolutions. Well, how many subsolutions do we generate? For each of the subsolutions, for each s prime, we only generate one solution, right? We make the solution a little larger because we tack on another pairing, but it's just one solution. So we generate one solution for each mi in m. That actually means that we're generating nm solutions times the number of subsolutions. Now, how many subsolutions are there? Well, you know, this is big and hairy and gross, except that we understand recursion. So we know what we need from that recursive call is the number of solutions that ASU generates given m minus mi and w minus w as parameters, well, how many solutions does it generate? If only we had a name for the number of solutions that ASU generates given sets like that. And we do. We have a name right here. This is why we give names. There's lots of reasons we give names. But this is probably the most powerful is it enables recursion in a very straightforward manner. So we can just call n again. This is nm times n brackets nm minus 1, comma, nw minus 1. Why minus 1? Because we're removing one element from each set, mi, nw, uh, otherwise. So this is what we do. 
if nw is greater than zero. Okay, so that's cool, but it would be nice to make this a little clearer. Uh, what are we really doing? We are saying n of nm and nw is one if nw is equal to zero. So when there are no uh, women, we produce one solution. And otherwise, it is nm times n of nm minus one comma nw minus one. Let's just write that out for a bit. You know, if, if um, we're taking one off of each number each time. So if nm is 7 and nw is 3, well, that's going to be equal to 7 times the recursive call, n of 6, 2, which is equal to 7 times 6 times n of 5, 1. And that's 7 times 6 times 5 times n of 4, comma 0. And that's 7 times 6 times 5 times 1. Uh, so this looks like a portion of a factorial. And if I go back up and I look at the diagram that I made up above, what I notice is that I've got four options for woman 1. And once I've chosen one of those four, I've only got three options for woman two. So I'm going to have nm options for woman one, and then nm minus one for woman two, nm minus two for woman three, and so on and so forth until I finish off the women. So this does have the form of a factorial, but we cut it off before we finish because there are missing women. Uh, so that's like 7 factorial in this case. Here's, here's my guess at the form that I want. 7 factorial divided by, we cut off everything from 4 down, so 4 factorial. 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to say that all of this is equal to an m factorial divided by how did we get to 4 factorial when there were 7 men and 3 women? We got rid of the leftover slots, right? We didn't go through 4 women that we would have had in SMP because we had too few women. So we want to divide by the leftover women, and the leftover women is the number of men minus the number of women factorial. Now, we could, we, we definitely could use induction to prove this correct, to prove that is that, that this equality here uh, is true between the recursive form and the non-recursive form, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Uh, let's see, so when nw is equal to 0, that is nm factorial divided by nm factorial, which is 1 regardless of what nm is. So that's good. Our base case is good. Uh, when uh, nw is greater than 0, we get nm times the recursive call. Well, the recursive call, we get to just assume that that's right. So it's going to be nm minus 1 factorial divided by nm minus 1 minus nw factorial times nm. So we're going to have nm at the top. Ugh. That sounds kind of gross, doesn't it? I'm just going to break that out. I'm totally confident about the base case, so I'm not going to do it formally. I'm not confident about the recursive case, so let's do that. We're going to assume, this is our induction hypothesis, if I were writing out a full inductive proof, that n of nm minus 1 comma nw minus 1, we're going to assume that that is equal to what this would suggest up here, uh, which is uh, the, the new nm, notice that the new nm is not just nm, it's everything on the left-hand side here. Right? That's the first parameter. So that's nm minus 1 factorial divided by, oh, I see what happened. This is the first parameter, and this is the second parameter. So nm is now nm minus 1, and nw is nw minus 1. So this is going to look really messy in here for just a moment. nm minus 1 minus nw minus 1 factorial. But maybe you can already see what's going to happen on the bottom there. nm minus 1 factorial on the top, 
And on the bottom, those two minus ones are going to cancel, right? Nm minus 1 minus Nw minus 1. That's Nm minus 1 minus Nw plus 1. Nm minus 1 minus Nw plus 1 factorial. And that's just Nm minus 1 factorial over Nm minus and w factorial. And that takes care of what I was worried about. When I was talking it through earlier, I had the denominator, the bottom, being this new ugly thing, but it's not. The denominator is the same thing it was before. So if we assume, going back up to our original recursive equation up here, if we assume that uh, n of nm minus 1 comma nw minus 1 is equal to this quantity we got to down at the bottom, which is our induction hypothesis, and then we're going to multiply it by nm. Well, what's nm times nm minus 1 factorial? Uh, that's just the definition of factorial, right? That's going to be nm factorial. So we'll get nm factorial divided by nm minus nw factorial. I didn't do a proof just now. That wasn't a proof. I did the pieces of the proof that I needed to develop confidence that my solution was correct. Could I write a full induction proof? Absolutely. You ought to be able to, too. You learned about them in 121. You practiced them in 221. What I'm doing right now is just putting the pieces together that I need to be totally confident I've got this right. So I've got a formula, an exact formula for the number of solution forms.